Nature is brutal, and when we lived in the jungle, we were afraid of the beasts among the trees. We all wished we lived in a strong kingdom that kept us safe. And heroes are those who lead us to kingdoms. They create them, they sustain them, and they die for them. One hero can save an entire tribe from suffering by killing the wild beasts in the jungles. And we see this theme in mythology. An early example is Hercules for the Greeks, who was known for his labors, where he conquered monsters. But once we overcame the jungle, our problems were more about other nations, and the hero evolved from a muscular beast slayer into much more of a warlord. We see Alexander the Great, a vibrant, energetic young general who took over most of the known world. Julio Cesare for the Romans, who reestablished the order and power of Rome. And even more recently, you saw an immense amount of energy projected onto Donald Trump. People were calling him God Emperor as he ran for office because they believed he would make America great again. Or within the religion of Judaism, they crave to establish their great kingdom among the hostile nations. And they are waiting for a Moshiach, a Messiah, to come and rebuild the temple for them. And this shows us that there is a slot within our minds where we can place a symbol that will inspire young men to be stronger and more excellent and give hope to those who are not strong enough that a kingdom can be achieved where they will be safe and able to contribute. This is the archetype of the Savior. And the most recent incarnation of this was Jesus Christ, who set the example of a man who is humble, but also stands up to corruption. And this example built Europe. But something very, very strange happened recently in the mind of the European man. Our notion of Christianity was that there was a God who was in control of reality, and he would reward you with immortality if you acted properly. And of course, he sent down Jesus to show us exactly how you should act. But Nietzsche observed that we stopped believing in a God in heaven. And this presented a very serious problem because Jesus, the hero which sat at the center of our psyche, was no longer someone we could believe in. And so we needed a new savior who would bring us to a new kingdom. And Nietzsche asserted that we must make this savior the Übermensch. That is a man who will not wait for God, but instead take history by the horns and lead all of us towards a great kingdom. But Nietzsche had a fear about this transition of power that ended up coming true. If we do not get the Übermensch on the throne to replace Jesus, we may in fact get the last man. You see, with no God in the sky, you deify Mother Nature. And you say to yourself, she will reward us if we just get back in touch with her. And it is our masculine instincts to build kingdoms that conquer nature, which is holding us back from the utopia and the symbiosis we would have with nature. And so the Messiah, the final form of man, is in fact a man who gives up his male instincts in favor of the feminine approach. And hence, you see our entire society becoming obsessed with de-pedestalizing masculinity as if it's some force of evil in the world, and instead trying to educate men to go against their instincts. But underneath their entire premise is the idea that nature has no dark side, which is wrong. Dealing with nature's evil is what the Messiah was saving us from in the first place.